welcome, welcome this morning or whenever you listen to this message, welcome to another broadcast of God's Word from Covenant Lifehouse Ministries. First of all, I want to say that I'm grateful that you're joining us today to listen to this powerful word from the Lord. Anytime there's a word from the Lord, consider it a, it a powerful word. So I pray that you listen to this word today with expectation that the Lord is going to bless you. I know when he gave it to me, he blessed me. But first of all, let's go to the Lord in prayer and bathe everything with his by a word of prayer to him right now. Amen. Father God, we thank you for blessing us with the listeners right there. Now, those who are listening, those who are watching, will you show them grace? Will you show them mercy? Will you give them comfort and strength in the name of Jesus and by the power of the Holy Spirit? We need to hear from you. You're always speaking. Sometimes we're not always listening. But as your word go forth on today, Lord, it's already been bathed in prayer. It's already been bathed in sweat. And now we pray, Lord, that you cover it with the Holy Spirit, that someone may hear it and act on it. We thank you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Would you turn with me this morning, open up your Bible, and turn with me to the Old Testament scripture of Proverbs, third chapter, verses five through six. Some of you say, I know what that is already. But Proverbs, the third chapter, verses five through six. And we're coming from the New King James Version. And this is what it reads in the King James, uh, New King James Version. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. That's some good stuff right there. There's some powerful words right there. So I pray that the Lord unpack it for us today and bless your very spirit. But today is also Communion Sunday, so please have your elements at the end of this message. Amen. But I want to open up by asking you a question. What if I told you there was a foolproof, guaranteed method to be successful in everything that you attempted? That's right, everything. Successful in your marriage and other relationship. Successful in your business or your workplace. Successful in parenting and raising your children. Successful in your finances, in your struggles, in overcoming your issues. What if I told you, you could be successful? Most of you would say, Pastor Joe, that's too good to be true. But in Proverbs, the third chapter, verses 5 through 6, God lays out a three-part strategy that guarantees success in everything. And for the last couple, couple of weeks, the Lord has been personally dealing with me with these scriptures. Now, I have read these scriptures before. I have quoted these scriptures. But God had me to go to these scriptures in the last couple of weeks and really dig into these scriptures so he spoke to me first, personal. And out of how to be successful in my life, those things I mentioned, in, in, in my marriage, in my relationship, in my pastoring, he spoke to me and gave me a, a this strategy from Proverbs 3, verses 5 through 6, how to be successful. But it's according to his standard. It's according to his standard standard. Amen. So today you're going to get the benefit of what the Lord and I have been talking about. Amen. And here's a short summary, short summary of the message. The secret of success is God's way. The secret of success is God's way. In other words, instead of your way, try Yahweh. 
That's the title of the message, too. In the Bible, there are several names that describe God based on his characteristics. But one of the most descriptive names, one of the most powerful names, is Yahweh. And in Exodus, the third chapter, verses 13 through 15, God instructs Moses to tell the children of Israel that I am who I am. And that's and it said, that's the one who sent you. Now, Yahweh, in effect, means I am who I am. Because the Hebrews found God's name to be so sacred that they didn't want to say it. So they shortened it to Yahweh. And God even said in those scriptures, go back and read them. He said, this is a name to be remembered throughout all generations. Now, the English language doesn't have an exact translation of the word Yahweh. So listen to this. So in the Old Testament and the New Testament, we see it written as Lord, L-O-R-D, in capital letters. When you see it, Lord, in all capital letters, that essentially means Yahweh, or I am that I am. But the most important thing to remember is that the basic meaning of Yahweh is the self-existing one or the eternal one. It emphasizes that, that God has lived for eternity. He had no beginning and he will have no end. He was not brought into existence by anyone or anything. He is self-existent. So as we go through these familiar verbs, uh, verses today in Proverbs, hopefully they will take on a new meaning for you like they took on a new meaning for me. You know, and King Solomon, the son of King David, he wrote most of the book of Proverbs, including what we find these two verses today in, in our text. Now, these, I would arguably say, are some of the most memorize verses in the Bible. And more than likely, some of you listening, you know these words by heart today. But we're going to see the application of these words. And now, whether you know these verses or you're just familiar with them, as we go over them today, be aware, be aware that they include three commands and one promise. Three commands and one promise. And we often quote these verses as a way of telling people to trust God when things are tough or when they're going through a situation that they don't understand. But I want to submit to you today that the wisdom found in Proverbs uh, third chapter verses five through six is necessary for success in every situation you face in life. You heard that correctly. For every situation you face in life, there's nothing that uh, Proverbs 3rd chapter verses 5 through 6 won't cover. Now, understand that I'm not talking about success based on, um, well, let me refrain and say it this way. What I'm talking about is success based on the biblical perspective of success. And the majority of people, including listeners today, we equate the definition of success mainly by measuring the amount of wealth or money a person has, the amount of power a person yields, the importance of the job that the person has, how many games or election you win or lose, and even um, the, uh, based on the amount of fame a person has in this world. But all of those are bad definitions of success. They're bad definitions of success. Why? Because they focus on what is temporary and passing and are short-sighted. On the other hand, on the other hand, the Bible defines success in terms of what is spiritual, what is lasting, and what ends in eternal life and joy. Amen, right there. 
Let me ask you another question. This is a question for you to ponder. Did you know that the Lord wants his saved people to be successful? Now, I'm not talking uh, about a prosperity ministry or prosperity gospel or anything like that. Did you know that God wants his saved people to be successful? Absolutely. God wants you to manifest biblical success in your life. So it's important to understand the significance of biblical success. You know, from the Lord's standpoint, listen to this. From the Lord's standpoint, biblical success means walking in his way. It means walking in his way and obeying and following his instructions. See why it's biblical success? And the Bible says this in Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 10th chapter, 12th verse. What does the Lord your God require of you but to fear the Lord your God, to walk in all his ways and to love him, to serve the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul? You see, our obedience to God's instruction is a prerequisite for our success, it's in, and it's mentioned several times in other scripture as well. For instance, for the, God said to Joshua, one of my favorite heroes, and, and Joshua is one of my favorite books, but he said in Joshua, the first chapter, seventh verse, this is the New Living Translation uh, version of it. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the instructions Moses gave you. Do not deviate from them, turning either to the right or to the left. Then you, will then you will be successful in everything you do. Did you get that? Somebody need to make that your life verse. Deuteronomy 10th chapter 12th verse. Now, before we get to the scriptures for today, this is what you need to know about biblical success. Biblical success is based on your understanding and activation of the timeless principles found in God's word. Biblical success isn't the pursuit of wealth or money, but rather the accomplishment of godly goals. Biblical success is not what you have, but rather who has you? And why does God want you to be successful in life? Exactly why does God want you to be successful in life? Remember now, I'm, I'm talking about according to his standards. He wants believers to be successful according to his standards so the world can see that in order to be successful, you don't have to lie to get ahead. You don't have to steal to get ahead. You don't have to cheat to get ahead. You can climb the corporate ladder, but you don't have to pull someone else down from the ladder to get ahead. In order to experience biblical success, there are some things we need to start doing as detailed in our text for today. I'm on someone's street right now. So verse 5a of Proverbs chapter 3, it gives us the, the first uh, criteria or command that we are to follow to have success in every avenue of our life. Listen to verse 5a. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Let me read that again. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. To trust in something is to believe in the reliability of that thing, the truth of that thing, the ability or strength of something. So when it comes to trusting God, that means believing in his reliability, believing his word, believing his ability, and believing in his power that what he said he can do and he can accomplish. Trusting him means believing what he says about himself and about the world and about you is true. 
Say that again, Joe. Trusting in him means believing what he says about himself, about the world, and about you is true. Trusting God is more than a feeling. Trusting God is more than just a good feeling that you have. Trusting God is a choice to have faith in what he has. He says, notice I said, it's a choice. Even when you feel your, 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 your circumstances would have you to believe something different or something else. Trust is based on our right understanding of exactly who God is. You know, it's hard to trust someone that you don't know or you, or you can't rely on. That's why we have to spend time really getting to know God by talking to him, listening to him, and obeying him. You know, you never really know how much you trust and believe in anything until you really depend on it. Say amen right there. You know, it's easy to say that you believe a rope is strong if you're just going to use it for a jump rope. But now suppose you have to take that same rope and you are hanging over a mountain or a cliff and that rope was the only thing holding you up and keeping you from dropping. Different story, right? Most of you would really only discover how much you really trusted the rope when you needed to trust the rope. Amen? Did you know that the text that says, trust in the Lord with what? All your heart. With all your heart. That means trust in God must be complete. To put half your trust in God means you're putting the other half in tr something else, either yourself, someone else, or something. That, that is still really a failure to trust in God. The Lord wants our complete trust. You know, and I concluded from this study that to trust and believe with all your heart is greater than trusting and believing according to your head. Your, your head is a place that you store information and process information. On the other hand, according to the Bible, the heart is the place where you have your will, your attitude, and your intention. The heart is the core of who you are as a person. The heart is essentially you, according to the Bible. So God doesn't want your head knowledge. It's good to have head knowledge. Don't get me wrong. It's good to have head knowledge, but he wants your heart. He wants your heart. And not just part of your heart. He wants your whole heart. So when you trust God with your whole heart, it means that you leave little room for doubt. That means that you are trusting and depending on him instead of your plan B. You know, a lot of times we say we trust God, but here's my plan B, just in case. God doesn't want your plan B. He wants you to trust him completely. So in our natural being, we have to learn to trust someone. That same thing is true in our spiritual being. We have to learn to trust God. Have you ever encountered someone who said, trust me? You had one of two reactions when someone says that. Either you can say, yes, I'll trust you, or you can say, why should I? In the case of God, trusting him occurs when we understand why we should trust him. Now, let me interject some transparency and truth right here. Sometimes trusting God can be difficult. That's real talk right there. So what you do when you are going through hard times and, and you have prayed and all you seem to, to hear from God is silence. What do you, what do, what do, you do? How do you hold on to your faith and your trust in such circumstances? 
So how do we learn to trust God? Trust doesn't naturally occur for us. A little baby, a toddler, has to learn to trust his parents or whoever is teaching him to walk. And what does that parent do? They hold him by the hand. They walk behind him, holding him up. And when he falls, they pick him up and encourage him again. That's a great illustration of what God does with his children. He holds you by the hand. When you fall, he picks you up again. That's what trust means. He shows us and demonstrates to us that he is trustworthy. Trust is active faith. We can true choose to trust him in daily life or try it alone in our own strength. But it requires acknowledging God for who he is and our need for him. And when we become God's child, we learn this step by step. So, Pastor, tell me exactly, how do we achieve this? How do we achieve this? How do we go about trusting God? Good question. This is going to sound simple, but give it to God. Lay all your fears and worries and problems at his feet. The hard part is not picking it back up again. So verse 5a says what to do. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Now verse 5b tells us what not to do. What not to do. Verse 5b says, and lean not on your own understanding. The word lean means like to lean on something for support when you're not strong and, and you need to lean on something to, to, to keep you up. You depend on that thing. Just like right now, I'm, I'm leaning on this, this, this lectern to hold me up. So the writer is telling us not to lean or depend on your own understanding. In other words, stop trying to figure it out. Stop trying to figure it out. That's a word for me right there. You know, many times we try to figure out things in a situation, yet we always don't have all the information. You know, one issue that I personally have that the Lord is releasing me from is overanalyzing anything. I call it analysis paralysis. Analysis paralysis. The Lord has always put me for, for the last uh, probably 40 plus years, the Lord has put me in position as a decision maker. But I suffer from analysis paralysis. To show you how ironic the Lord is, he put me in a position of decision making, even though I suffer from analysis paralysis, so I can depend on him, that I can go to him for those decisions. See how God works? See how God works? He knows because of my engineering background, I'm going to overstudy something. I'm going to overanalyze something. So he puts me in a position that I have to make decisions, that I have to come to him. Go ahead, God. Do your thing, God. So in my own life, in my own life, I have learned that the more I trust God, the more I can trust him. The more I trust God, the more I can trust him. Put him to the test. Trust, see if you can trust him. Did you know there are some things that God chooses not to tell us to understand? We don't have to understand what everything that God tells us, but we still need to trust and be obedient. And so that takes us back to the first command, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. God is not 
so much concern if we understand his command, but he is definitely concerned if we obey his commands. Now, you know, when we sign a contract, we typically read the fine print, or at least you should read the fine print, but when God wants us to uh, uh, obey something and he gives us a, a command, it's often just like this, a blank sheet of paper, and God says, sign right here. And you say, but, but, but I don't know what to do. Sign right here. But God, how am I going to accomplish this? Sign right here. See what I mean? God wants us to agree to do what he wants us to do, and he will fill in the details later on. So what is it? What is it with you right now that you have yet to trust the Lord with because you don't understand how it's going to be accomplished? You don't understand how God is going to work it out. You don't understand how you're going to overcome it. What is that thing right now? Let me tell you this. You don't have to understand. Just step out on faith and trust God. In the 12th chapter of Genesis, Abraham didn't understand it when God told him to leave his country leave his relatives, leave the place he was comfortable with, leave his father's house, and go to a land that God would show him. Abraham didn't know where he was going, but Abraham's faith was tested and proven, proven in that he did what God told him to do. But wait, there's more. In the 20th chapter of 2 Chronicles, King Jehoshaphat consulted with the Lord when a great army came uh, against him. And the Lord told him, put the choir out in front of the army. What? Put the choir out in front of the army. And they sang a hymn, praise the Lord for his mercy endureth forever. And they defeated the enemy. Still more, if you're not convinced. In the sixth chapter of Joshua, God instructed Joshua to do a number of unusual things, none of them which had any significant military value. But on the seventh day of marching around Jericho, the walls fell down. What seemed stupid and silly to them, God had a plan. So it may sound silly to you. You may not understand it, but trust God. You know, I didn't understand it when God told me to leave the church that, that I was in, where I was the associate pastor and told me to go start a church. I didn't understand it. But God says, leave it and do what I want you to do. You don't have to understand just let go of your ideas and understanding and allow the wisdom of God to prevail. You see, our opinion, here's something for somebody. Our opinion should not rank higher than what God says. Because we don't always know the truth or the whole picture about something. Listen to this. This is what God spoke right here to me. We might have a good idea, but a God idea is always better. We might have a good idea, but a God idea is always better. What I'm saying is God knows best, so trust him. And you know, Father really does know best. That's why we should trust him. Not only should we trust him, but we should learn to distrust certain things too. We need to filter everything through the perspective of God and through God's word. And we can trust God because we know that he is all powerful and he sees all things and knows all things. And part of his attributes as Yahweh are, he is 
absolute reality. He is utterly independent. He depends on nothing to make him who he is. Everything that is not God depends totally on God. That's powerful right there. Everything that is not God depends totally on God. He is consistent and constant. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He can be improved. There's nothing about improving on God. He is not becoming anything. He is who he is. So every time we hear the word Yahweh, or every time we see all capital Lord in the Bible, it should remind us each time that, the, that God absolutely is. So instead of your way, try Yahweh. So we now get to the third criteria for success in living uh, in, in success uh, for living in everything, any and everything, according to verse 6a. Verse 6a says, in all your ways, acknowledge him. In all your ways, acknowledge him. We might translate that verse as, in all your ways, know God intimately, deeply, and personally. Did you know that you lived your life for Jesus Christ after you were born again? At least you were supposed to. Second Chronicles 5th chapter 15 verse says this in the New King James Version. And he died for all, that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them and rose again. That means that God is a part of every part of your life and the things that you do. He, all, he wants to make sure that you are always on the right track. That means that, that, that when you are intimate with God, you give him access to every area of your life, not just a small part of it, but every part of your life. You allow him to have a say in all things that you plan on doing to make sure you don't end up in a dead end or in a, in a hole somewhere. And the way that we do things should reflect God's ways. Nobody should say, that's ungodly, Joe. Everything that we do should reflect God. And when we acknowledge God in everything, we are inviting God into our everyday life and conduct. When we acknowledge God in everything, it is a practice or is practicing the presence of God in the everyday thing that happen in our lives. And when we acknowledge God in everything, we are literally giving him credit for everything. You know you didn't do that by yourself. You know you didn't accomplish that hard task by yourself. You might have gone out and worked those 40 plus hours, but God gave you the strength. He gave you the energy. He gave you life. He gave you help. Don't leave God out of the picture. Now, we have covered the three commands from this text that we need to follow in order to receive guidance for Yahweh. And the very first thing we have to remember is this, that we have to admit that we need a guide in life. We have to admit that we need a guide in life. Now, with these three commands, they are to be taken together. They are inclusive. You can't do one without doing the other two. So after we have followed them, God gives us a promise for success according to verse 6b. Let's read verse 6b. And he shall direct your path. He shall direct your path. The, the King James Version used much stronger language. It used covenant type of language. And he shall direct your path. He shall direct your path. When we allow God in every area of our life, he is going to direct your path. 
You know, God made, did you know that God made you that you couldn't see into the future? No matter how hard you try. And why did God do this? He did it so we can depend on him. Proverbs 14, 12 says this. This is from the NIV. There is a way that appears to be right, but in the end, it leads to death. In other words, we all have made decisions at times that seem right. You been there? We made decisions that seem right, but we didn't consult God. And later on, they turned out to be wrong. Some paths lead to dead ends and get you off track. That's why we need to admit, God, I need help. God, I need help. Have you seen that Geico commercial with the little Geico beside the uh, car? He said, somebody help me. I have a flat tire. We need to scream out to God like that. God, I need help. See, God wants to lead you on the right path. And that's exactly what he will do when you surrender all to him and let him be your God. You tried it your way, now try Yahweh. So Proverbs 3rd chapter, verses 5 through 6, tells us that, that the secret is a relationship with God. Instead of your way, try Yahweh. Obey God in everything. Follow God's methods, no matter how much you don't understand them. Consult God first before doing something important and persevere until you see the result. And why? Because he is the one who knows every situation you are going to face, including every pitfall. So Proverbs third chapter in these verses five through six gives us a revolutionary way of looking at life. Know me, spend time with me, put me first in every area of your life because when you do you will have success in everything in your life so restating what god told joshua and joshua 1 7 be strong and very courageous be careful to obey all the instructions moses gave you do not deviate from them turning either to the right or to the left then you will be successful and everything you do. Instead of your way, try your way. You tried your way and it didn't work out. Instead of your way, try your way. Amen, amen. Father God, thank you for that word today. I thank you for first speaking it to me. You spoke it to me because you love me. And then you had me to turn around and, and what you and I had in our intimate relationship, you had me to speak it to someone else who needs to hear it. That instead of trying their way, they need to try your way. There's someone right now, Lord, who needs to, who've been trying things their way in their finances and their marital relationships or their other relationships and they have messed it up. They haven't seen things happen yet. Let them know that they need to try Yahweh. For those, Lord, who are going through health issues, let them try Yahweh. Those who are going through financial concern, let them try Yahweh. Those who need help in general, let them try Yahweh. We thank you for this word. And Lord, if there's someone who's not save yet who haven't come to you let them definitely try Yahweh we thank you O God in the name of Jesus amen we ask that you bless this communion now we ask that you change these physical elements to the symbolic symbolic spiritual elements as we take communion we thank you in the name of Jesus amen amen what a word right there. Mm. So will you please now take out your communion elements as we
partake of communion. And the scripture says, with the bread, it says, the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. So let's break it and eat it together. Then he looked over the cup. And the scripture says, in the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Let's drink together. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us today. We appreciate you, you joining us once again for another service, another broadcast. And let me make this quick announcement. We're supposed to be physically back in our facility uh, on September 12th. But there is a possibility that we might change for two reasons, two reasons. We are going to have some renovation uh, work done. We are going to have the place uh, painted. We are going to have things done with the windows, new carpeting put in place, and we haven't started those things yet. Second thing is the COVID-19 variant seems to be increasing, and we want to be mindful of the people that God has given us charge of. But we'll let you know in time by uh, the September 12th. So stay tuned for a report from, from me or someone else about uh, September 12th. And if you are a member of Covenant Lifehouse, we thank you. We truly thank you for sending in your tithes and your offerings and supporting us during this hard time that we're going through but we're not meeting in person. We sincerely thank you for your support for keeping this ministry alive. We thank you if you're a non-member for sending in your donations to us. We really sincerely thank you. There's names that we could call, but we're not going to uh, call those names. God knows. We just thank you for supporting us. So finally, if you want to know how to get uh, come into a relationship with God, there's going to be information at the end of this broadcast. Stay tuned at the end. Look at the credits. And you see how you can support us, how you can give your life to Christ. So stay tuned till the end. And as always, be safe, stay healthy, keep your joy. See you next time. God bless you. Amen.